Hey there, welcome back. Sony just released the a7R 4 and it's got a lot of people scratching their heads if the new features are worth the added cost. Chris here from Videomaker. We'll answer that and more in our hands-on review of the Sony a7R Mark IV. We slimmed down our review to make a video that wasn't too long, but don't fear, you can find the additional 1900 words we cut out at Videomaker.com, link in the description. And if you wanna to jump to any part of this review, we put the time code in the description as well. And remember, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to hit the notification button. The Sony a7R 4 offers more to hybrid shooters than any other camera before it. For $3,500, the a7R 4 combines a 61 megapixel resolution image sensor with 6K oversampled video for capturing UHD 4K. Plus, it has no record limit time. While the codec, frame rate, and resolution options for video haven't changed since the previous model, the added benefits to still shooters elevate the a7R 4 to the level of hybrid shooter's dream camera. 61 freaking megapixels? The biggest perk to this camera is the sensor resolution. As of today, August 2019, it has the highest resolution of any full frame camera. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who needs a 61 megapixel image? And the answer is very few. However, the biggest and best use for a 61 megapixel image isn't so you can make a huge print, though you could do that. Rather, it's the enhanced detail you get when the image is downsampled to a smaller size. The camera's large sensor brings both high resolution stills and oversampled 6K when shooting in full frame 4K. When shooting in Super 35 crop mode, it captures 4K with full pixel readout without pixel binning. That means no jaggies and no more to worry about when shooting cropped. The crop of Super 35 mode changes depending on if you're shooting in 24 or 30 frames per second. In 24, there is a 1.6 times crop and a 1.8 times crop when shooting in 30. Because of the sensor's high resolution, when shooting stills at Super 35 crop mode, you get a 26.2 megapixel image. Wait, no 10-bit or 4K 60p? There have been no improvements in the specs when shooting video in the a7R4 over the a7R3. The camera can shoot in XAVC-S HD, XAVC 4K, and AVC HD. The top resolution is 4K 30 frames per second with a bit rate of up to 100 megabits per second. The bit depth is 8-bit regardless if you capture internally or externally. When capturing internally, you get 420 color space, but it steps up to 422 when sending video out the HDMI to an external recorder. The top frame rate is 120 frames per second and is available in 100 megabits per second or shoot in S and Q mode for real-time slow-mo playback of capturing video from one frame to 120 frames. For video shooters, it's unfortunate that there's no change in recording options for either internal capture or when capturing externally via HDMI. That means no 10-bit video at all from this camera. Additionally, 60 frames per second is not available in 4K. Dynamic range exceeds expectations, sort of. Using the DSC Lab Xyla 21 testing chart, we are able to test the dynamic range of a camera. The Xyla offers 21 bars, each with a stop less light than the last, showing up to 21 stops of light. This chart will either confirm or debunk any manufacturer's dynamic range claim. In this case, we are able to replicate the specs that Sony claims for the camera. The catch is, not all of that dynamic range is very useful. For example, here you see video shot in S-Log3 and S-Gamut3, the setting with the most dynamic range. We can see 14 stops of dynamic range, but just barely. The last three stops are so noisy that they wouldn't be good for much. When shooting in normal picture mode, the dynamic range shrinks by quite a bit. We saw 10 stops of dynamic range, with 8 of that being usable. When it comes to stills, Sony adds a stop to their dynamic range performance claims. They say the camera can shoot 15 stops. That's a hefty claim. However, after processing the uncompressed RAW files, we saw 16 stops of dynamic range, with 9 of that being clean without noise, 3 more stops that are usable, and then 4 stops with loads of noise. But there is information there. Low light performance, where's the noise at? To see at what ISO noise is introduced to the picture, we did an ISO ramp from ISO 100 to ISO 25600. When shooting in full frame 4K, noise becomes noticeable at ISO 6400, but the picture is usable up to ISO 12800. When shooting in 4K with Super 35 crop mode, we saw a stop less with noticeable noise at ISO 3200 and usable footage up to ISO 6400. However, with that said, all footage up to 25600 would work in a pinch, but the quality wouldn't be optimal. Rolling shutter isn't much of an issue. 
Regardless of whether you're shooting stills or video, the rolling shutter will appear when shooting either fast moving subjects or when moving the camera quickly. This will appear as curved vertical lines. If you're shooting anything faster than a sloth, don't use the silent shutter on this camera. The rolling shutter is bad. Image stabilization is super welcome. The a7R4 has 5.5 stops of image stabilization via steady shot. Regardless of what lens you put on the camera, be it Sony, adapted, or third party, you will benefit from the 5 axis image stabilization offered in this camera. 240 megapixel images are amazing. Another perk is the update to pixel shift multi shooting. The feature was first included in the a7R3, but in the 4, it's been improved even more. If you're not familiar with pixel shift, Sony describes it as a feature that shifts the sensor in half or one pixel increments in a programmed order to capture 16 pixel shifted images composited into one high precision image of approximately 240.8 megapixels from original data of approximately 963.2 megapixels equivalent. Pixel shift multi-shooting requires Sony's Imaging Edge software to combine those images, and it doesn't do it in camera. When detail matters and when the subject matter is still, it's incredible. The amount of detail when scaled down is stunning. Once combined, we outputted the composite to a 16-bit TIFF that was 1.5 gigabytes. Yeah, that's a big photo. What's with this fancy autofocus? The autofocus is a big deal with this camera, called real-time IAF. When shooting stills, you get both human and animal eye tracking. Video is limited to only humans. When shooting stills, the focus points find the face and track it. With video, it's initiated by a tap from the shooter on what the subject is. We were impressed by how well it tracked when shooting video. Shooting at f1.4 on the Sony 85mm G Master Prime, the focus was like glue. We then wanted to test how the camera would do when the subject was moving rather than the camera. Shooting my six-year-old son Lucas, walking, running, and jumping towards the camera until we hit the closest focus the lens could achieve and the focus stayed strong. This autofocus system is a great solution for when shooting from a gimbal or in times where keeping focus would add to the difficulty of capturing the image. Even though we are strong supporters of shooting manual focus, this focus is ready for prime time and we would definitely use it under the right circumstances. The menu sucks. Even though Sony has been offering a mirrorless full frame camera longer than any other brand, the a7R4's menu is the worst in the marketplace. This iteration of Sony's menu isn't much different from menus in the past, meaning it hasn't improved. We found all of the normal menu operations without a problem. You'll easily find the resolutions, frame rates, picture profiles, and format media functions. However, when you jump into the new autofocus functions, you might get a little dizzy. For example, when shooting video, to turn on the real-time tracking IAF, you go into the camera menu for the features, then under the menu called function of touch operation is where you turn on eye tracking AF function. From there, you choose either touch focus or touch tracking. Real-time IAF is engaged by touching your subject on the screen when shooting video. This is one of the top features new to the a7R4. Why is it so confusing to execute? Why not an IAF on off choice? Come on. Long life, small battery, no overheating issues. Sony has now shown through its newest alpha cameras that their cameras no longer have a short battery life or overheating issues. Although we saw a battery life of slightly shorter than the three hours we got from the a7R3, at two and a half hours, it's still pretty good. Plus, we didn't experience any overheating. Screen no flippy. Unfortunately, Sony did not improve the screen articulation in the a7R4. This is unfortunate. What's even more frustrating about it is that the recently released Sony a6400 has more screen articulation than this camera, but at a fraction of the cost. Grip buttons and more. Even though the size of the camera is barely changed, the feel of the grip is much better than the a7R3. It easily can hang from the tips of your fingers. The thumbstick now has a better feel with the new added dimples. This is much needed because the menu operation is not touch sensitive. Additionally, if you require wearing gloves when shooting, the larger button size will come in handy. Last up, for still shooters, the new operation of the EV knob is very welcome. With the a7R3, it didn't lock at all. With the 4, the EV knob now locks. Two SD card slots and they're both UHS-2. Sony has been offering multiple card slots in all of their A7 cameras for a while now. So far, however, they have not both been UHS-2 compatible. 
Now that they both are, the camera can capture the same thing on both cards, or you can set it up to capture video to one and stills to another, or maybe you prefer raw stills on one and JPEGs on the other. The camera has no record limit. It's a big deal that Sony, surprisingly, isn't yelling this from the rooftops, as I feel they should. The camera will capture to one card until it fills up and then moves on to the next one. What lenses should you get? There are two different lens bundled with this camera, the Sony FE 24-105 f4G OSS at $1400 is a solid lens for all use. Then there's the Sony FE 24-70 f2.8 G Master at $2200. Lastly, we tested two primes with the a7R 4 the Sony FE 24mm and 85mm f1.4 G Master lenses for $1400 and $1800 respectively. Behold the multi-interface shoe and the EMCB. One M shotgun mic. The A7R4 has a new multi shoe interface, Hot Shoe, not seen in other cameras yet. The shoe now allows for digital audio capture, like with the new 8 capsule ECM B1M shotgun mic. The mic has an analog to digital converter in it and then transfers that digital signal to the media. This eliminates the need for a cable to run from the mic to the camera and lowers the risk of unwanted signal noise because of the digital transfer of information. Let's take a listen. Right now I'm in Omni in auto gain with no attenuation at all and this is a digital signal going into the A7R4. Now this is the same settings but in a cardioid pickup pattern. If you can hear me a little bit better, uh, maybe I'm a little more forward, I'm not sure. I haven't heard it yet. This is the same settings, but with a hyper or super cardioid pickup pattern. Now, uh, I should hopefully be a little more present. I'm about, uh, about five or six feet away from the camera, so if I sound more present, then it's doing a better job. The only issue with the AMC B1M is its $350 price tag. Ouch. If you're a hybrid shooter, meaning you want a strong video and stills camera, the Sony a7R4 is at the top of its class. Just looking for a high resolution stills camera? The a7R4 might still be for you, though you will pay a premium for the added resolution over the previous model a7R3. If you're a video only shooter and won't be able to use the photo features, then the a7R4 might be a poor choice. You can get much more for less money from many other cameras on the market. In all, the video looks great and with the addition of no record limit time with dual card slots, it's ready for just about anything. Our favorite feature is pixel shift multi-shooting. Having the detail that a 240 megapixel image offers is just fantastic. It's disappointing that the menu is poor and that the camera lacks 10-bit video. Overall though, we're very impressed with this camera. Hybrid shooters rejoice. The Sony a7R4 is here and it's a beaut. Continued learning and practice, as well as taking refreshers on the basics, will help keep your skills sharp. Check out our video courses to stay on top of your game. Find a course by visiting videomaker.com courses or click the link in the description.